Are you brainwashed about India? Probably. I'm sure I still have some prejudices and wrong thoughts in there. I don't. I never have. Lies. Any wrong thoughts. About anything. anything. Ever. Yeah. You're yeah. perfect. You're better than your dad. He's a racist. Well, I... Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. I am Ashley. I am not a racist. Good. Uh... <laughs> That's the Good. that's the bare minimum for bare a human minimum. Being. That's it. <laughs> Shouldn't even need to be said. <laughs> Just letting you know. Uh, please follow us on Instagram. Twitter, all juice. Go. It's juicy. It sounds juicy. And today it's a long video. Uh, and I hope it's a, I hope it's a good video. Twitter me that it's a long video. Well, it's twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Good grief. Yeah. So all right, get a hammock. Who knows how it'll be? I hope it's good. It's been recommended, but it's Strap called... Strap in! Get a full glass of chai and join us, won't you? Uh, it's called Let's Check If You Are Brainwashed About India. Alright. Um, but it does have a white person talking, so that's weird. Mm. That is weird. Um, maybe she's just really smart about India. Who knows? There are people that are really smart about India that are of all colors. Here we go. Many of you have seen people of Indian origin in your country. Yes. How do you perceive them? Like and how do you perceive India? What? Many of you think of India as a country of poverty, slums, dirt, rapes, and caste system. And many of you got introduced to India to the, the famous, famous movie Slam Dog Millionaire. Or Gandhi. And then there are some of you who know India for its Bollywood and yoga. Well, it is not entirely your fault that you think this way. And there is no doubt that India no, does have its like imperfections, yeah. but India is definitely not what we are shown in our countries. Like many of you, I was also a victim of the mainstream media in my country until I ended up living in India and started to keenly observe this country. And of course, to understand India and its mechanism, one really needs to have fine-tuned senses. Next time you see Indians in your country, remember, that their country is being transformed into something like this. However, you are mostly shown only that. And of course, many of you were never told that for many years India has been one of the fastest growing major economies of the world. Yep. Are you worried that Indians are stealing your jobs in your countries? No. No, you are not fully informed. Perhaps you do not know that Indians are also providing thousands of jobs in your country and they are doing it in different parts of the world. There are more than 800 Indian companies in the UK, which employ around 110,000 people. In the USA, Indians owned firms employ more than 600,000 employees. Have you noticed that when the media in the West talks about rapes in India, they rarely talk about the rape rate statistics. I mean, they and give probably all of the news. it is because India is nowhere close to the Western countries in rape rate. Yes, I'm aware that while talking about rape, one must consider things like underreporting, marital rape, homosexual rape, false filing, law of rape, conviction rates, and many other factors. And that is why I sincerely recommend you to dig a bit deep into this and analyze where your own country stands yeah, before you smart. become a victim of the mainstream yep. or fake stream media. Fake stream. That's yeah, way, I like that. Where you also told that the so-called developed countries do not only have a much higher rape rate, but also their citizens travel abroad to rape the citizens of poor countries. Europe, North America, Australia, New Zealand are some of the main sources of international child sex tourists who perform sex crimes in other countries. Yes. Yep. Were you also told that many Western women travel abroad to enjoy female sex tourism? And it is difficult to believe that the boys who are hired by these rich women are in some cases not underage. India has always been a multicultural society. And yes, in one way or another, discrimination may exist in India too. But wait, it does. which country is crime-free? No. Is your country crime-free? Yes. Is there no discrimination in your country? Yes. India <laughs> is a country where its minorities are allowed to thrive and grow in numbers and also in percentage. India 
is a country where many Dharmic traditions like Jainism, Sikhism, Buddhism and Hinduism were born. And the people of India have even accommodated the ideologies and religions that did That's not right. originate from their own land. When I first heard of Indian caste system in my country through our media, it was not even mentioned that in India not only the minorities but also the members from those societies which are also known as low caste end up becoming presidents, vice presidents, prime ministers and chief ministers. Has the media in your country told you about this when they talked about Indian caste system to you? Has the media in your country also mentioned that India has already had a female president and a female prime minister? I know that in many so-called developed countries, many low-skilled immigrants from poor countries are purposely and temporarily brought to do low-class and dirty jobs. These poor people are kept in substandard conditions and after the job is finished, they are sent back to their own countries. The developed countries make the most of their strong currencies and their own citizens shy away from doing small jobs. That happens here. Well, these developed countries are so <laughs> smart that they perform oppression on the humans that they import and then later, very cleverly, they dispose them. Yep. Can we call it exploitation too? Indians are extremely self-critical and they are genuinely concerned about their problems. They do have the intentions to fix their problems mm -hmm. and they do not shy away from true. talking loud <laughs> against their democratically chosen government. That is so true, very true. But you must remember that when Indians talk loud about their problems, it does not mean that they want to replace India for anything else. That's true. And it must be pointed out that Indian media has not really started ridiculing the Western countries yet. Even though many Western countries love to present themselves as some kind of role models. These Western countries continue to forget that they can also easily be ridiculed for their wealth inequality, crimes, intolerance, rapes, poverty and even hunger. Perhaps Indians are more interested in self-correction than ridiculing others. For sure, Indians know very well that tragedy is not a competition. Indians are not only providing jobs around the world, they are even feeding many hungry and poor outside India by their philanthropic work through their temples and gurudwaras. And very importantly, they are not expecting anyone to embrace Buddhism, Jainism, yeah, Sikhism or Hinduism. There is no doubt that India does need to improve its modern waste management infrastructure as many of its streets continue to look dirty even though an average Indian produces far lesser waste than an average American or European. Yep. Also, the per capita emissions from India are so low in comparison to the USA or China, China. and yeah. Indians are nowhere close to the West when it comes to historical emissions. For all these years, you were told about the poor sanitation of India, but you were never told that Indians were also the pioneers in ancient sanitation system we long all before about Rome. the Western countries right. were civilized. But of course, it shouldn't matter today. Even after 70 years of its independence, India is still not open defecation free. The government of India is running some massive scheme to build millions of toilets and only time will tell if that is going to be enough or not. Not many people know that when it comes to defecation, some citizens in the Western countries have a strange addiction or rather a disorder. And this is where a potential exchange can take place between India and the West. India can bring the latest sanitation system techniques from the West and the West can benefit from the authentic yoga from India that can help those Western citizens who are suffering from such disorders or addictions. But of course, 
It can only happen if the Western societies are brave enough to address their embarrassing problems and not just sweep them under the rug. Yeah. Humble. As it is very yeah. well known that such kind of disorders and addictions have been reflecting in the Western adult film industry as well. Not many people know that India has nuclear weapons yeah. and it is said that India has the fourth strongest military yeah. in the world. This is an old video, it's old India video. <laughs> does not believe in muscle flexing like That's China true. or the USA and neither it believes in expansionism. And yes, India is not a world leader in everything. It's not a world leader in earning <laughs> money by selling <laughs> weapons. It stands nowhere when it comes to earning money by selling crude oil. However, its space agency, ISRO, does earn money by sending satellites in space for a very cheap price, fulfilling the satellite dreams of poor countries, and also by helping the advanced countries which want to save money. India is not a leader in the porn industry, and neither is a top destination for sex tourism. Mostly, Indians are just very simple and kind-hearted people and only some of them know that their land was the richest in the world for thousands of years and it was gradually pushed into poverty as it was exploited, looted and colonized by its innovators and colonizers. And these unfortunate victims who have just tasted their independence after centuries of oppression and atrocities are finally rebuilding their country in an extremely democratic environment that may slow down things a bit for them, but at least their system attempts to involve everyone in the rebuilding of their nation. The good news is that India's rise is unlikely to cause any country a demographic trouble, as India's dharmic institutions are not interested to convert you from your religions. Not just that, we are not really going to face any brown supremacy, even though Indians themselves come in all skin colors and features. Yep. It is also highly unlikely that Indians will hate you, even though many of you may have developed prejudices against them because of the mainstream media houses, which for some special reasons are overplaying and sensationalizing their problems. Indians are gentle, accommodating, compassionate, hospitable, and yes, they do not have a fake smile. Nope. Their smiles are still very real. And most importantly, they, they are, are forgiving. forgiving. Yep. Look yep. how they even welcome the people from the land of their ex-colonizers yep. in their country, even today. Before you comment on India, remember that the countries which were never colonized will not easily understand what it means to suffer from a post-colonial identity crisis. India may have its imperfections, and in this process of rebuilding, it will make its share of mistakes, and it will learn from them. Wow, Perhaps cool. we also gorgeous. need to learn how to build a relation with Indians on equal terms, with mutual respect, without feeling superior, or inferior, while focusing a bit more on ourselves to address our own yeah. embarrassing problems. See you again. <laughs> Jeez, man, her voice is oh. just... <laughs> Bless yeah. her heart, yeah. So uh, Bless her yeah. heart. The video oh was actually God. pretty good, though. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't see any false information. In no, there. the best part of the like, video... You could tell us, obviously, if there was. I, I, yeah. The best part of the video is, is her sincerity. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's, she's like, I moved to India and I learned this. Let and me exactly. tell you. People that aren't, obviously, we've now been quite educated yeah. in India for the past mm -hmm. month. We've been submerged. But what she said, a lot of people from America or Western you civilizations no will think a lot of these things. 100%. Especially that I mean, India is just all dirty, all uh -huh. crap. Third yeah. world country. Yeah. Won't even know it's Asia. It's Middle East. So yeah. A lot of people think that, that it, sincerely, people that, that they're not the same color as us, so they're probably terrorists because they're from the Middle East. Yeah. Or you have a, or you have <laughs> a, turban, from you have a turban on your head or yeah. a beard on your face. Yeah. Yes. It's just, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And then they think that they're stealing the jobs and all this kind of stuff. And so it's... It's what she said. Educate is all true. yourself. Yes.
Well, it takes, that's what I said. She said it takes bravery for the countries to do this. And it's, 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 it's I said, humility. It, it, those changes don't happen. You're not going to get a country, for example, like America, who we, we love our country, but our country has a lot of problems. Got issues. And for one sure. of our that's biggest a, problems that we theory. are genuinely guilty of, and one of the things that most people don't like about Americans is how arrogant we are. Americans. Um, Merc. Yeah, we, we can be so freaking arrogant. Um, and and it and er, the opposite of the opposite of being arrogant, which is built in, and rooted in pride, mm -hmm. is humility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you can't accept. You're not teachable if you're not humble. To me, the greatest attribute of a human being is humility, because every other good quality comes from being humble. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't have the qualities of being a forgiving person, or being a loving person, or mm -hmm. being an empathetic person, unless you yourself recognize you're not all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got stuff to learn. And, I'm a mess too, guys. And that, okay. and that you're a mess, <laughs> and that you've got, you know, I want, you know, to say I'm not prejudiced. It, well, yeah, just, you just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, there are a lot of Americans that aren't like that, that, that are yeah. humble, that really are hearkening back to the roots of our, and we understand in our history, it's amazing how freaking much we've forgotten it, but we're, we yeah. are born out of a, con a country that was oppressed yeah. by Great Britain. But then we went, wait, Great but, Britain oppressed us? Right. <laughs> but, then, but then we did that to the people who were here. And what? now we have no empathy for countries like India who Even were, we were oppressed by the same oppressor. Yeah. And <gasps> th this, her, her voice, her, her presentation is, is very lacking, but she gets the bonus points and the grace because I think this is just a really sincere, genuine, I think this girl really got transformed and wants the whole world to know, like we do, yeah. Yeah. about the truth about India. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because we do. Here in America, guys, America has a long way to go on a lot of things, and one of them is their stereotypes that they have of, of India of, and Indians. Well, not just India, of everywhere. The everywhere. stereotyping oh, yeah. that is done across the board. Even here internally. The, yeah. The blanket statements about people groups. Yeah. Where an entire group of people is just blanketed with them. Yeah. The, whether they're skin color or that political party or it's like that lumped place, into there. like people in right. california you're from that it's talking about the south or talking about the east coast people right. in new york like it just there's tension everywhere yeah <laughs> not in america though because we're the best <laughs> number one america <laughs> pow 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 <laughs> oh no that's my impression of an american